Hello again. We are Chris Lee and Chase Robinson of Southeastern 16, joined by Oreo. We are set to preview South Carolina's opener with Old Dominion. Man, that guy never stops. Um, opener for Shane Beamer, looking for a big year, got a tough schedule. It's a little bit easier in week one with Old Dominion. The Gamecocks, as we do this in the middle of August, are about 21-point favorites. You can catch this one Saturday. August the 31st, 315 Central on the SEC Network. Chase, uh, tell us who our content is brought by first. That's right. Everything you see here on Southeastern 16 is brought to you by Bet Online. They are the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything online sports betting. Right now, you can receive a 50% free bet of up to $250 on your first deposit to bet on anything from UFC to baseball to Formula One racing. Bet Online has every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. When the game's over, you can go to the online casino, get in on a game of blackjack or poker, or one of the over 150 slots games. Head over to the website today to get in on the action. Use promo code BELIEVE, B L E A V, for your 50% free bet credit on your first deposit up to $250. That is promo code BELIEVE, B L E A V. Bet Online, the game starts here. All right, big year for both programs. Uh, Shane Beamer's got an uphill climb. I think he's got a good roster and a brutal schedule. Again, this is one of the better opportunities for wins for the Gamecocks. Old Dominion, coached by Ricky Ronnie. He's got some SEC experience. He's been at Vanderbilt off the James Franklin coaching tree. Anyway, offensively, I think Old Dominion's got his work cut out for it here, Chase. Uh, second worst yep. offense in the Sun Belt last year, 348 yards per game. 62 sacks allowed. Now, there are some pieces. Grant Wilson last year, 2,149 passing yards, 17 touchdowns, eight interceptions. Officially, he rushed for 291 yards. I think the, the actual total was half of that in, until you take sacks out of it. And again, the protection issue was there. He comes back. Kelby Williams and Isaiah Page are their leading returning receivers. They combined for 69 catches, 996 yards, four touchdowns. Uh, but I, I'm just not sure they got enough. Aaron Young, their starting running back, he's a fifth-year starter, uh, fifth-year player, transferred from Rutgers, ran for 94 yards a year ago. I feel like Carolina's defense is going to be a little better, and this is not an offense that is, um, I, I think, exactly loaded, and I think that's going to be a little problematic for the Monarchs in this one against that Carolina defense. Yeah, you know, they spent the offseason trying to build up the defensive front and linebacker. That was two positions that uh, that struggled last year and that they lost a lot of guys in uh, from last year. And they're they're really looking just to have a better year offensively. Um, that was not, not a great year last year defensively, not a great finish. I mean, they finished last in the SEC in sacks and tackles for loss, so they really didn't have anybody to get back there and provide any pressure. Uh, on on opposing offenses last year, and so uh, they kind of changed halfway through the season their schematics. Um, they typically they have that four two five defense. Um, the end of last year, they used more of a three three five, and all indications are they're going to use a little bit of both this year. And so you you could see both there with the with the Gamecock defense. But several guys who stand out to me uh, starting on the defensive line: Tonka Hemingway, um, a, a guy who's getting some preseason love. Uh, he had four and a half tackles for loss last year, one and a half sacks a year ago. Um, he's a guy who's who's played in a lot of football games and um, and and gets in there and provides some pressure and has has um, blocked some passes and 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 whatnot. So I think he'll be kind of an anchor of the defensive line. They got a, a transfer from Florida State and Gilbert Edmond, uh, who uh, had a, a couple tackles for loss and a sack a, a year ago there for the. Seminoles and and then the rest of the defensive line uh, transfer from Georgia Tech on the end and, and Kyle Kennard and then T.J. Sanders uh, uh, back in a South Carolina uniform. But then you look at the rest of the defense. You got a guy like Debo Williams at linebacker who uh, a lot of folks are high on and rightfully so. Uh, he had a sack last year and and uh, was able to to get in on some tackles for loss and and uh, he he's played in a lot of football games as well. Uh, he's a big guy, and, uh, and I think he's going to be a great linebacker this year for South Carolina. And then they're uh, on the safety position in the secondary. They've got kind of three guys who um, are, are I'm really excited about seeing, and that is 
um, Nick Emanuori there at the safety position. Also, um, you got DQ Smith and Jalen Kilgore. Um, they've kind of settled into their roles, and I think they're going to be uh, names to watch uh, there in the, the secondary for South Carolina. Um, you got uh, O'Donnell Fortune, who's who's one of the corners there for um, for the Gamecocks. And then the other side is where they're kind uh, they're, they're trying to find out who's going to be the guy, and that is um, uh, Vakari Swain and Judge Collier both kind of battling for a spot on the corner, and and that's that that's a cause for concern. They're, they're two younger guys who are having to uh, to 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 find a way to get in that that starting role, and so this is a much improved defense. I don't think you're going to see the. The, the poor numbers on defense, as we saw at times last year from South Carolina, I do think they they utilize the portal well, and I think uh, they do have some experience coming back that's going to help with guys who played last year and got a lot of snaps. And so I, I think you're going to see a much better um, defense this year from the from the Gamecocks of South Carolina. I think the side I'm more interested on is is when Carolina's got the ball. I yep. want to see what it looks like with Lenore Sellers. He's a tight end size quarterback who can really run. I think he ran for, I don't know, 13, 1400 yards as a high school senior. He's getting his first crack as a starter. Nick Harbor's a guy we've talked about a lot in the offseason. I want to see how this offense looks with all these changes, including coordinator, by the way, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see this too. And it, Lenore Sellers is a guy who you really didn't know about going into the spring you know he got in a little bit last year behind Spencer Rattler but he had his coming out party in the spring game and South Carolina fans are, I think are really excited uh with, with Sellers leading the charge there Robbie Ashford the Auburn transfer is is right behind Sellers there in the uh, the quarterback room and so they they have an experienced backup as well um if needed but Lenore Sellers has seems to have a really good arm he also can run the ball as well uh, which which makes things excited. And also you look at the running back room and you've got Rocket Sanders, the Arkansas transfer there. And, and I think staying uh, or, or saying that he can stay healthy I think is a big thing for Rocket yeah. Sanders. He battled that at Arkansas. He's going to be dangerous uh, for the Gamecocks as well. And so uh, and, and then you mentioned those receivers and, and Nick Harbor, who is who is just lightning fast. He's a, a track star. And then you've got a couple of transfers in. Jared Brown comes to uh, South Carolina from Coastal Carolina. You've got um, Gage uh, Lorvadian from Miami of Ohio, uh, Amari Huggins-Bruce from Louisville uh, in the in the receiver room. And uh, in as far as tight ends go, you got a transfer in Brady Hunt from Ball State. Uh, Delvian Campbell from Nevada. Uh, comes in to South Carolina. So they they hit the portal from the receivers. You know you've got a good one in, in Nick Harbor, uh, but now it's creating some depth at wide receiver who's going to be the other targets that they go to, and that's that's who they're going to have to rely on out of the portal uh, to make that happen. Uh, but as far as the offensive line goes, um, you know it'll be interesting to watch. There's a blend of, of experience, and then there's, there's some inexperience on the line as well. Um, you got uh, Vershawn Lee, who's kind of the leader there at center, uh, who's probably the most talented player on the line and uh, and will definitely stand out. But uh, they're really looking to solidify guys. Uh, you know, you, you think back to the spring, listening to Coach, he was saying, you know, there's probably nine guys who are fighting for spots, uh, starting spots on the offensive line. And so um, I, I think that's a, that's an area – that uh, that we're just gonna have to wait and see what the what this team looks like at offensive line. But having Lee as kind of the anchor there, the center up front, having some experience there, I think will definitely help uh, trying to solidify who's going to be on the left and the in the right side of the line. Chase, I'll correct myself. Uh, Dell Logan's second year as offensive coordinator, at Caroline. You would have soon as I said it. Like I think I'm wrong about that. I was uh, glad you mentioned uh, Jared Brown. He was pretty explosive at Coastal Carolina almost 17 yards per reception a year ago and also ran it for nearly nine and a half yards of carry. So I don't think he gets talked about much at all, but that, that may be a, a kid that the people are sleeping on just a little bit. I said, I thought this was the most interesting side of the matchup. Some of that is just all this new stuff for South Carolina. How does that look? The, the other part is that old dominion there's, there's a case to be made 
that they've got some good players here. Well, there's not a case to be made. There's a case that's been made. Uh, Jason Henderson, their linebacker, is a preseason first-team All-American. It feels steel. He has led the FBS in tackles the last two seasons. He had an injury, missed the spring, but he's proven. Uh, Denzel Lowry on the defensive line is an all-sun belt guy. They're not returning any secondary stars, but they did get Patrick Smith Young from North Texas, where he had 77 tackles. That was second on the team. Still, this defense not great a year ago. Uh, allowed 27.2 points a game and 392 yards. Uh, again, with, with South Carolina breaking in so many new parts and maybe having a little bit more of a running game, which they notably have not had under Shane Beamer, I think that's where it gets interesting if, if the offense sputters a little bit early, if Sellers is nervous in, in his first start. You never know. Games like this can be interesting just because they're openers, cohesiveness, yep. nerves, all those things, but still – the Gamecocks were a 21-point favorite for a reason. I think the roster is probably better than people think. It's just a brutal year yep. for the SEC. I mean, it, it just – yeah, I think this this league goes about 14 deep with good teams, and I would include Carolina in that number. Uh, and I just think it's going to be too much for Old Dominion to handle at night in Columbia – or, excuse me, mid-afternoon in Columbia. Yeah, I think this is definitely a, a, a good way to start the year for South Carolina um, in what is going to be a, a tough schedule to to battle against. But like you said, there's talent on this roster. And I think they're going to get better every week, uh, especially with all the experience, inexperience that they have. They're going to be getting experience every week, and so I think they will continue to improve. And yeah, I think they start off the season with a win here against uh, Old Dominion. Yeah, well, we'll be here to talk about it afterwards. We cover SEC football, basketball, and baseball year-round. Literally, we have shows once a week in baseball and basketball when it's not football season, in addition to additional content. Gamecock fans were all about basketball here last year. We, we heard from them loud and clear, so uh, we, we enjoyed them being around. If you are watching and haven't subscribed, please do it. That really helps out our numbers. Uh, helps our visibility. Hit the like button. That will do the same. And if you're interested in sponsoring, we reach an audience of millions every year. Caroline.smith at southeastern14.com. Yes, I know we're now southeastern16, but that email will get there. And uh, let her know of your interest. We will find an opportunity that works for you and your budget. For Chase Robinson, I'm Chris Lee. We are Southeastern 16, presented by Bet Online.